This is our 157 lecture on landscapes, which used to be called terrains in UDK. Um, if you find documentation, it's actually kind of hard to find it um, because a lot of it's for the older system called terrains, which is this button here. We're going to be using the landscape mode. You can actually kind of use the terrain editing mode and go back and forth, but it's not recommended because it's a little buggy and they're basically phasing out support for it. So we basically, as you can see here, it's the old window. Um, what we want to do is I just created a blank layer, and before we do anything, I want to add a directional light. Now, directional light basically is like the sun. Um, in some programs, it's called a parallel light as well. And all I want to do with this is just make it slightly angled, and, and in this view, make it slightly angled as well. Now, we're not going to notice this till we make the, the terrain, but... Um, or landscape, but the thing is, is it'll be helpful so we can actually see the depth. If you don't have a light, you're not going to see the depth on the landscape. So, um, you hit the landscape button, and the first thing you have to do is create it. Now, you can import a height map, which is basically a black and white uh, or grayscale map. The closer something is to white, the higher it is. The closer something um, black, the lower it is. And you can take uh, photographic data from satellites. You can take any photograph and do it. Um, there's a bunch of different things, but we're just going to make one inside the scene. So before we can create the landscape, we have to tell it how many vertices. And I'm going to make a relatively small one. I'm just going to do 127 by 127. And the instant you get that data, and I actually provided a chart and the instructions that you kind of need. You can play around, but usually it's a factor of 2 um, minus 1. For the vertices and you'll see that there's different quads which is basically how many subcomponents there are and there's four sections in this whole item and you can change that as well um, the 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 components have to do with how um, if you want to cut holes in it to make create like caves and openings um, each section basically or component has to be its own thing and then the quads are basically the, the little squares so once we get this all set up we do create landscape and voila you can see here's our landscape and at this point, there's nothing happening to it. It's pretty well flat. I'm just going to maximize this so you can see kind of what's going on. Now, if I switch over to wireframe, you'll see this is basically what we have with the level. And if I go in here and I do component mode, let me zoom out a bunch so you can see this. There's actually, if I hold down the control key and click, there are actually four different components in this scene. Uh, let me click off and go in and select them. Now another thing you can do is you can add a, a component. You can see with me doing this, we're actually getting more um, components that we can kind of add and, and build. So you can always build off and you can also do a select. So um, those are some different options you have as far as adjusting um, the map and getting different information about it. And actually this only has one component, sorry, um, as opposed to multiple ones. So uh, you could go back and redo the setting um, or just build it out. I'd recommend usually keeping it small and adding stuff as opposed to going the other way because usually what happens is people make uh, areas that are too big. And if you want to blast holes in something, this is what you use to remove an area. Um, if you're going to make a cave or an opening, you need to do much smaller sizes, components, and it kind of takes a while, but once you get a sense of the scale, you can work with it. Now, the big thing that we want to look at, and the, the interesting part, is if we go into the paintbrush, this is where all the fun is, and you'll see that you get this hovering, and if you hold down the control key and the left mouse button, it adds and builds it up. Now, right now, you can see the tool strength is pretty aggressive. I'm just going to undo that and do something that's a little less, and then do it again and increase, and there's an option for size, so it's how much influence you have on the space. And then the fall off, which is basically how it behaves. And then there's a couple other settings as far as what you can do with it. Um, so uh, holding down control key and left mouse button paints up. And then let's just switch this over real quick. So you see if we do the clay, it'll basically continue going up and it's a little smoother than having it off. If not, it'll go to a default value, which is where your target value is. So you adjust the strength, which is how much influence. Now if I hold down control and shift in the left mouse button, what it does is it creates, you can see gradually we're creating a hole. So this is how you delete um, material. And you basically just go back and forth and then continue working until you get a terrain that you like. The biggest problem with the terrains is getting the edges to look right. 
Um, that's why sometimes people do mountains or they do blocking volumes or stuff so you can't go outside the scene. But that's just, uh, or people, older versions, is you basically would add a plane that's water um, in the scene. And that's why a lot of older games have islands. So we got this set up. And you can spend a lot of time just adjusting. There's different things like erosion. Um, you can do leveling things out, smoothing it. So there's a lot of controls that you can do, but the easiest way to learn is just to kind of play around with it. So we have a basic, and now what we want to do is we don't want to use the default texture, so we want to create a new material. So at this point, we want to go in and go to Content Browser. And I'm just going to clear this out. And I'm going to go in Environment because that's where all the materials that we are looking for want. So I'm going to create a new material and I will just do this in a uh, demo uh, material and I will call this um, uh, escape material. Pretty basic. Yeah, okay, now the, the terrain itself is actually saved in the, the, the uh, UDK file, but the material is separate. So now we've got to go get some textures. So let's go textures. And I always just go to environment where most of these are. And let's start and let's check for ice. There's the ice. Now we'll take that and we'll pull that in. And now let's do uh, sand, which I'm going to use for rock. There's that one. And then finally, I'm going to go in and look for grass. And here we have a grass texture. And bring that in. And now we have these three items that have been drug into. Um, and now I can start working in material layer. Now the thing that happens is basically we have one material but it has three layers and we have to do a special setup in order for UDK to understand that. And if you don't set it up right you won't be able to basically paint your textures. So if we right click and we look at terrain there's different options and the two that we, well the first one is let's just do the weights. So you see with the weight, it basically it has two components, it, or three. There's an output, and then there's a base, and then there's a layer. So what we do is we want three of these. So I'll just do two more, and I can just copy it, weight, layer weight, and one more, terrain, layer weight, because we need one for each. So I want to uh, basically start connecting these. Now, this is going to be the bottom the first layer and there's no base, there's nothing below it, so we're going to connect that to the layer. And at this point we're not seeing anything here and that's because the preview weight is set to zero. So I can set this to one or whatever I want. And now that goes out and that goes into the base of the next weight node. And then this new layer is added, so this is going to be on top of that. And once again I can hook this up and set this to one as well to actually see it and now we get a combination of the two and you can tweak stuff so I can do what, uh, 0.5 um, it's not going to impact the final it's just basically what the preview of the material is and then we continue doing that so we connect from the base to this one the new layer here is the ice and we'll give this a weight of 0.5 as well and then we will connect this to the diffuse. And now we have our basic material. Um, at this point we're not seeing anything, but you can see it's different combinations, different textures, etc. Now in order to be able to call these up, we assign the material to the landscape and then we have to actually call out the layers. So this is critical and this is also case sensitive, so you want to make sure everything is the same. So I'm just going to simply call this grass. I'm going to call this layer, and you see how the name changes. This one I'm going to change to rock, and this one I'm going to change to snow. Okay, so now I have this all set up, so I have my different samples. I assigned each one into a layer, and then I chained them together using the terrain weight option, and then I put those on diffuse. And be aware that you can also do normal mapping, so you can get texture, specular, everything. So. I'm just showing the diffuse, but you can do a lot more with this. And now I want to save this material. And let it build and close it out. And the first thing you need to do is you need to save it because basically if you don't save the material, you're not going to see anything. So I'll go into my landscape demo and I'll clear this out. And you'll see there's my material. And I just want to save this. And I'm just going to put in my custom folder package and make sure you ship that as well. 
now go up and we can find it landscape demo. There's some material. You can see it's not loaded, but once we assign it, it'll get loaded. So go back and we're in short landscape mode and we already have this um, selected. If for some reason you have multiple landscapes, you'd have to go and make sure you have the right one selected. Um, we're going to hit F4, landscape component. Uh, and actually LOD, oh, we're in component mode. Uh, let's go back out and actually select the entire object. Okay, so I have four. Now I have the whole thing. So sorry about that. So you actually want to get out of landscape mode. And you can see there's two options. Last week we talked about physical materials. You can change the sound. And then here's the landscape material, which is what we're interested in. So highlighted landscape material and loaded it up. And the instant you do it, something really weird is going to happen. And let's close it out. And you can just give it a second because what it does is it renders and assigning the material and those types of things. So now it's assigned, and the first thing you'll notice is that basically the landscape is gone, and that's because nothing has been assigned to it, um, even in unlit. So when we go back to landscape mode and open it up, we have to basically change from edit mode none to edit. And once we do that, then we basically want to come in and we want to start adding layers. So the first layer we did was called snow, and I'm going to hit plus. And now you can see it loaded up the material. You can also assign a custom physics material, those types of things to it. So you have a lot of control here, but you have to make sure that the name's right and you're doing the proper work. And if not, it won't work. So, uh, like I have a capital R that's not going to, or capital O that's not going to work. It has to be lowercase and proper. And then finally, grass. And you'll see that even though I typed in grass, I have to click it and create one more blank, this option, or to load it. And now I have my three different layers. So this is pretty simple. You highlight whichever one you want, and you use in the same brush. And let's just make this big so it covers the whole thing. Hold down the control, left mouse button. Give it a second because that's loaded the material up into the buffer. And voila, you can see we get this. Now the size is obviously really off on this. So if we go back to the um, material, let's go to Content Browser and open up the material again and look at it. The thing that's missing is right now the UV coordinates or the way that the texture is assigned to the, the terrain is it's it's basically each component's getting um, the entire texture and we don't want that. So we'll go into terrain and we will do layer coordinates and now we get special UV mapping that enables us to override and control this. This is specifically for, for landscapes. And you need to hook up now, you can do one for each one if you want to change the size of the textures. These all kind of have the relative same scale, so it's not as big of an issue. Um, but I want to change that, and I'll just show you what happens if we just do the default. So I'll just save this out real quick. you got to wait till it re-renders it. So it always takes a little bit of time. You just have to be patient. It also depends on your graphics card and your processor speed. because so you can see it's basically applying the changes and the update. Um, and then once it's done, We'll go back out and we'll see, and now you can see all of a sudden that it's microscopic. So that's not going to work either. So let's go in and try to find a compromise. So I'll change the map scaling, let's say, to 5, which will make it 5 times bigger, and hit Save. And then if you do a point, like point 0.1, that would be 10 times smaller, which you wouldn't necessarily want. And the big thing is finding a balance between the the tiling of the texture and also remember when you bake the lights and you render out the scene that it'll hide some details so if there's a little bit of texture it's not the end of the world because you're going to be pretty close when you actually see it um, and also if I go into light mode you can see all of a sudden there's shades so it kind of changes it it depends the relative scale of your scene um, and you kind of need to bring in your character and play in order to see that so now I have that layer added, and now let's go in and actually let's just go and do the snow because then you'll get an idea of what we need to do. So let's uh, close this out and go up. I'm going to make this smaller and decrease the follow up a little bit smaller and do this. And now we have this. Hold down the Alt key, give it a second to load up once again. And now that's going to have the same scale. And if I slowly rub this and add it, you can see now I'm gradually adding snow to the layer. If for some reason I want this to have a little bit of snow, I can come in here and add it as well. So you can get really cool results, and there's no limit to my knowledge of how many layers um, you can do. This be aware that the more you do, the 
a little bit more processor intensive. So now you can see I've added that and I've created um, some more sense in the terrain. So that's how uh, that works. And at this point, those are the basic things that you kind of have to be aware of in order to make it. So you basically create the landscape, you um, sculpt it, and then you create a material, you bring in the material, and then you paint on the layers of the material as you want to. Um, and it's fun, and it's pretty easy. And then if you want to change stuff, you adjust the texturing to increase and decrease the size of it. So the other tool that we have at this point is now that we've added um, the texture, we want to add some actual um, items to it. Um, and they have a thing called the foliage tool, and you can use this to assign um, grass, uh, static meshes, or different uh, leaves or trees. We're going to go in and just pull up the content browser, and let's clear this out, and let's go down to Showcase, and Showcase has some plants because there's a whole demo they have based on plants, and do static meshes, and let's see what we got. We got vines, we got different trees. Okay, let's grab the large tree. And all you do is you simply just drag it in. You can see it's set up. You can close this out. We got our brush once again. You can see there's different size, different density. And at this point, hold down the left mouse button. And you can see I'm starting painting trees. And you can see it's way too dense. So I'm going to undo. And that's because it's doing this very tight density. So let's knock this down to maybe five in the same unit. And now I come in and I do this. And you can see that's still too dense. So let's go down to even one. And go in, and now you can see every so often we're getting trees. Now, the thing that's going to happen is all the trees are going to look the same. So, what you want to do is you can go in and you can start to do different things. You can change the angle. Uh, this is basically the angle so that you can see this angle is pretty far. We don't want to go past a certain angle. Um, we can also do non uniform scale, or we can do it together. Um, actually, let's just do it together. So, this is the, the minimum scale. Let's do 0.75, and then let's just do this up at 2, so it's really extreme. Um, you can also give everything a slightly random pitch, so I can do uh, 4. Uh, ground slope, we can knock this down to maybe uh, 25, so it's not as long. And then you can do a range of the heights, um, etc. So you can see, and then you can also tie it up and associate it to different layers. So let's uh, undo. Again, the trees, and let's do and the numbers are still here. And hold down the control and left mouse button, and now you can see I get a little bit of variety as far as the size, and I can come and change this at any size. But now I'm getting something that looks a little bit more realistic and accurate. And you can also use this with rocks. So people go through and they do a bunch of different things and build it up, but it's a pretty awesome tool to use, uh, create. And Unreal also has something I don't get into, it, but they also have a, um, a light version of what's called a speed tree. And Spreet's tree is a system that's used in some games to, to dynamically generate forest and trees. So there's a whole other system if you're interested in playing with that. So at this point, we just render it out, and we can play this. And um, what's going to happen with the terrains most likely is you're going to have a pretty big space. So just uh, some of you might already know this, but just to go over and confirm, if we wanted to make this into a capture the uh, vehicle capture the flag, which is what people usually do with terrains, you want to do a couple things. Um, first thing is go into Actor Classes, and you'll see there's uh, Player Starts. This is under Common, so Common, Player Starts. And then I just use the older one, um, even though they're kind of the same. And I'm going to add the UT Player Start here, and hit A just to maximize it. And you'll see that this is a red Player Start. So the red team, you want eight of these, will hook up and be created. Now, if you do the blue team, now the thing with the terrain that you want to make sure that I didn't mention is you always want to hit the N key and make sure it falls to the ground. Um, if the slope's too steep, when you go to render um, or build, it'll tell you there's an error. Um, if I go and I open up the um, all the different controls, you can see that basically there's a team number, and if I increase this to one, it goes blue. So blue team is one, and then the other one is zero, the red team. Now the other things we need is navigation. You want flag base, so you only want one of each. Um, oh, I didn't have it highlighted, so there we go. So there's a flag base. There's no flag here. The flag will not appear until the game starts, so it's kind of a placeholder and dynamically generates because the flag is a dynamic object that you can move around. The same with the blue flag, so you just those, drag those in. And then the final thing you need for the vehicles is vehicles themselves. So if I grab, like, let's say that the cicada, 
and I bring this in. This is a placeholder for an object. It's actually a factory, so it dynamically generates it. And if you hit F4, there's some other options. Start neutral means that either team can use it. If you um, turn that on, if not, it'll be whichever uh, one it's close to. And there's some other controls you can do as far as what you can do with the vehicles and what you can. So you would add that and build it. And then the game type that you need in order for this to work is you do file and save as. And it needs to be a VCTF. So vehicle capture the flag dash my level or my escape and hit save. And what's this? I'm going to get some errors, but let's just build this real quick and let's run around so you can see what it looks like. Oh, I have um, global elimination on, so it's going to take a, a second. Um, but those are just the, the basics, um, and I'd like everyone to play around with the vehicle capture the flag. Um, the other thing you can look into is uh, playing around with the lighting. Uh, if you have light mass, the nice thing is, is you just need the one directional light, which represents the sun and it'll automatically start to bounce around and you'll see that once this is rendered we're actually going to get lighting in this area as well. Um, the other thing you can do is if you go back to static meshes and you look there are pre-made sky domes and you can bring those in. The default level has a pretty fancy one but there's different sky domes that come uh, generally in the environment you can find them. Um, I think there's one for night, one for day, one for stormy and it's a giant sphere and you just basically bring it in and now you have the illusion that there's an environment around the entire space. Now this is taking a while just because the terrain is much more complicated, there's more vertices. Um, so uh, let's see how this goes. Because um, at this point I might... Okay, we're slowly rendering it out. So we're getting it. It's just the complexity of the level is a lot more than your normal level. Um, you do this once and you get it right, it's going to look really nice, so it's it's worthwhile um, just waiting for it. Okay, there we go. Uh, so landscape, okay, yeah, so the mobile issue, and close. And you can see that what I have is there's actually lighting here, and then it's also connecting it. The one thing you might get an error of is you have to make sure that there is a path um, path connecting the base to all the other player starts. If not, you're going to get an error because the bots won't know which way to go. So you have to make sure that you're going to have to connect it and you might have to add, which we've done in previous, add an actor. You might have to add a path node and manually come in and grab this object as well and manually say that I want you to, um, or the path options, you can force a path so that you can connect things across an entire scene so that basically the bots and the characters can see everything. If you don't have stuff connected, you're going to get errors and it's not going to work. So that's the end of that uh, lecture. Uh, everything's online.